All right, what up, y'all? My name is Paul Womack. They call me Willie Green, and I'm here with Plugin Alliance for a mixed with Mega Mix. That means for this entire mix, I'm only using plugins that come with the Mega Bundle, which, to be honest, is kind of easy because it's got everything that I could want. EQ, compression, effects, everything is in there. So I'm just making records, right? Easy. This song is a record with my man Prem Rock from Philly's Wrecking Crew from Backwoods Studios here in Brooklyn. He's one half of Shrapnel, a phenomenal MC. We've been making records together for a long time. So we linked up and I produced a record specifically for this with him. So check that out. Let's take a listen to it. Nobody gone, they transition, the sand shifting, bloody palm hand switching. It's more than just fan fiction. Find a grand wizard and get clan missing. The feedback from the task game hissing. Past tradition, do my late disciple. Last up, I don't the button up. Plus, bought enough mutton with me. Billy said nothing, just push the button. It's a luxury. Boys, far from bum a cup of whiskey. Need to toughen up, push them to the cusp. It's risky. Release the hounds, no obstification. I drop like release and bows. I'm curious, your constipation like the most dangerous I Occupation. Let it hit you like the point of intoxication Under the tongue, for Occam's razor of observations Why you got that long face then? Beats I go bump in the night Sleep with the scissors and I'm running with the knife Bouquet of stone roses come to life Is that light at the tunnel? Summer a train fright Beats I go bump in the night Sleep with the scissors and I'm running with the knife Bouquet of stone roses come to life Is that light at the tunnel? Summer a train fright The lies comes in all shapes and vibes. All right, we'll hold up right there. You can check out the whole thing. This is going to be online. You can check it out. So let's dive into it. I like to start uh, kind of at the end when I'm looking at a mix, and that's my mix bus. You know, a lot of people kind of as they go throw more and more stuff on their mix bus or two mix or their master fade or whatever you want to call it. But the problem with doing that as you go or doing it at the end is that you start undoing everything that you kind of did to that point in the mix. So I've got a template built where I know certain things that I like, and I start with that at the very beginning. So I'm mixing into these things. I'm not changing and undoing my mix at the very end. So on this record, we've got the Better Maker EQ, which does exactly what it says it's gonna do. It really is wonderful. We got the iron compressor, and then for a little bit of sauce, a little bit of flavor at the end, we got the Phil's Cascade from Malaysia. These are all super dope things and also very expensive in real life. So uh, shout out to Plugin Alliance for letting me have these and letting y'all have these for an affordable cost. Cause this is nice stuff. So I'll just give you a quick little rundown of what I'm doing. Open up the top end on the mix just a little bit. The EQ stuff, I'm gonna put the EQ in, but as I'm working, I'm gonna adjust it, but it's there I know I'm gonna wanna use it. Bringing up the bottom end a little bit. And then, you know, with any kind of Poltec style EQ, if you match your attenuation as much as you're boosting, it adds kind of some upper harmonics above, in this case, 30 hertz, and it starts to add to that punch down there. So I'm boosting and attenuating both at 0.8 dB just to give me that lift in the bottom and also that extra knock a little ways up. And then just open it up a little bit around 16K, just for that sparkle, just for that air up there. We're adding in a little bit around 5K. That's kind of like the pizzazz frequency where everything starts to sparkle a little bit and starts to sound a little expensive. And these here, these mid bands, these I'm adjusting as I go. If the whole thing needs a little bit more forwardness and those high mids, that's where I'm gonna go to this 5K. If it building up a little bit, getting a little murky down in the low mids, uh, this is around 350 and I'm just, just notching a little bit of that out just for some clarity. So that's the EQ. On the compressor, I start with some kind of basic stuff. I love the air bass option on here. I like bright top end, open top end, and a big bottom. So that does that for me. The side chain EQ, EQ1 gives me a little bit of mid-range forwardness, so I like that. The same thing with the two bias. So these are settings that are part of my template. And then attack and release time, where my threshold is at, is all kind of based just on whatever song I'm working on. This does a lot of analog modeling. I actually like the digital mode a lot because with my bus compressor, I'm kind of just controlling things. I compress throughout, so I'm not trying to 
overdo it. I'm adding color here, but I don't want too, too much color. I got a lot of analog modeling plugins upstream. So I put that, you know, in the digital mode and you see I roll off my parallel a little bit and we want to get it wide. We want to strip, we want to spread it out. So a little bit of stereo width. And then with Phil's Cascade, not using a ton. You'll see my mix knob here. I'm just dialed up, you know, not going overboard with it. A little resonance to get a peak again around that four or five K range and just a little bit of bias that kind of changes the thickness of it. So that's kind of, you know, push the taste. That's the basics on the mix bus. Like I said, I like to start there at the end because you want to mix into these things and then make smart decisions throughout your mix, not just slap them on at the end and all of a sudden you lost your direction. So moving on, let's dive into these drums, you know? Uh, this is a hip hop record, so you know the drums got a bang. We'll just look through my drum tracks really quick and then I'll show you what I did with them. The song basically started really with this bass loop. Right, so it started there. When I produced, I'm like, okay, that's cool. Now where we wanna go with the drums. I usually start with the drum loop and then kind of build up from there. You know, so that's cool. Uh, I took a loop, I chopped it up a little bit, but that's not smacking enough. So then we add in the rest of my drums. Just added some kicks and snares, standard stuff to it to make sure that we're punching. So when we first hit, that's the big kick, aptly named. Um, and that's just on the downbeat every now and then when I want to accent. But on the kick drum, you know, I wanted something punchy. This is built around a bass sample. And so I want punchy drums and occasionally that huge woof that the big kick is going to give me. But I want to leave room for the bass here. You got to decide what's going to be your super bottom. Is it gonna be a drum? Is it gonna be a kick drum? Is it gonna be your bass? Everything can't live in the basement. Remember, there's a long way between 20 hertz throughout the whole bass range. Use that whole range, and that's how you get that real full low end. So on the kick, went to the SSLG channel. That's what I came up on. I learned on SSLG, so kind of gravitate toward that. And this is really a little bit of compression and then a little bit of attack and some extra thump down there. Right, rolling off some of the top end up above 4K. I don't want any little gremlins up there, any high end stuff moving around. You know, these samples come from various places. Sometimes I got a little grime on it. You hear that in the bass. I, I like my grime. I don't want to over grime, but we got a little grimy here in the greenhouse. Uh, so that's on there. And then you already know about my love for basement. And so that's on there again. We want to punch, we want to hit. So when that kick comes in, it's supporting the underside of that drum loop. So for the snare, again, I wanted a punchy. The drum loop that we're dealing with is, you know, kind of feels like an old school throwback R&B thing. And I want to punch it up uh, with a little more emphasis, but this is not a trap song where it's like quick hi-hats and very short snares. I want a punchy full snare. I went to Elysia again, those are the homies, and Envelope is a transient designer, but you can do it frequency dependent, which is really nice. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra snap to that snare, and I want that snap, actually it's more of a thud to the snare. I want that to punch at the bottom. I want a thick snare, and the snare on the drum loop is a, is a little thin. So we added that around 150, and then up around 300 hertz, I shortened up the sustain a little bit because I want it to just punch and then be out. This isn't like arena rock where we need that huge snare. It just needs to just kind of hit you like that. And then because I'm a SSLG boy, I've got a little bit of that compression, fast attack. So we're really containing that and having it punch uh, as supposed to crack. A little taste EQ. And, you know, that really did it. And then into the black box because we got to scrunch it up a little bit. I want a little bit of I want a little bit of fuzz on there. I want it to saturate a little bit. So that's mostly it. Hi-hats are pretty standard. Didn't have to go crazy with the hi-hats. Rolled off some of the very top end so it's not shredding your ears up and then a decent amount of the low end for any extraneous rumbles that you might want. So let's hear that just without the bass.
So it's got a little bit of an old school hip hop feel, but it's not like dated like this was made in 92. You know, it's got full range fidelity with that big bottom kick and all that. And then, you know, I like a little percussion. You hear that in the beginning, it comes in with the org. And we're doing a little bit of stuff to that. So shakers and hi-hats. I'm not someone who likes them super duper bright. You see how we rolled off some top on the hi-hat track too. I just don't want it shredding my ears like that, especially if you're listening to earbuds and stuff, it gets to be a lot. So I'm using the digital V3, rolling off the top, whole lot of the bottom, because I don't want the shaker here. I want to push the shaker back behind the drums. If it was a band, we're in a room, think of the shaker player standing behind the drum kit. That's just to add a little bit of motion. And then to add a little bit of space, one of my favorite joints, actually, from the Mega Bundle, which I don't see people talk about a lot, is this Fiedler Stage Acoustic Enhancement. I always call it Fielder. It's Fiedler. Uh, and it just gives you just a little bit of acoustic positioning. You know, when you're dealing with loops, they don't necessarily exist in a space. And I like my mixes to have space and not just instrument, 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 right? So here's without. So that's very subtle. If you're not wearing headphones, you might not have heard it. Put on some cans for a second, and it just shifts it from here, and it shifts it to the left just a little bit. So now it's like homie playing the shaker in the room, and that's where they're sitting. So it's just like that, just to give me a wide, we're going to use the whole panorama. We're going to use the whole stereo field. So that covers... Basically the drums throughout, you know, I got a tambourine that comes in in the chorus, but nothing real crazy with that. I've got a reverse cymbal and then instead of like a crash, a broken bottle because I wanted a punctuation, but without crash. So we're breaking bottles. Uh, but in the hook, we've got this reverse break and then we bring in another drum break here. So not a reverse drum break. Uh, going into the hook, we've got this kind of pitch down drum thing. I used a, I used a pitch uh, thing in Cubase to do that. So I added this drum break because I wanted some more motion in the hook, more energy. I want you to really feel like you're moving, right? But I don't want it interfering with the other drums. So it's filtered, but not just with EQ. I'm running it through another secret weapon in there. And, and, and that mega bundle is the shred spread. Yeah, you can use it on guitars. It's made for guitars. I don't use it on guitars. I use it on other things. So I've got on, on these drums, because what I want with this loop, the drums I have, they're stereo, but they're mostly center-ish focused, right? And the hook, I want the hook to be big. I've got some background vocals that are panned out. And so I want a loop that's going to be thick and wide. So I'm using the shred spread. Out. We're out at 200, right? And... Shredding a little bit because we get scrunchy and watch this. Right, so that's taking it from in the middle and it's cool, it's knocking a little bit, but it's putting it more out on the side so it's gonna fill in some of the gaps and some of the space my other drums aren't occupying. And it's this thick thing that just adds this weight. So that hook is really, is really thumping. Uh, so going there, we're going into the, the Lindell 80 channel, the Neve joint. Again, we're going for thickness here. I want that full sound. Uh, it's a little bit of compression, boost up the bottom a little bit, and then a little bit I want the snare on that to pop. Not even crack, but just pop. And so we're rolling off uh, up above 12K. We don't need the high end there, uh, but a little bit of that pop around 3.2, right? And then the brand new joint came in just in time. Uh, I love the black box and the mid side, the MS, the stereo joint is really nice. So I've got this in MS mode and we unlinked it. And so I'm driving the Pento to give me some of that warmth down on the sides and then to maintain that crack and just amplify my already, already stacked up snares. Just a little bit of that triode in the center just to really smack it up.
right? So we're just widening a little, we're just widening a little bit to fill in the cracks on the drums. And that sounds like this. That's hitting, man. <laughs> that thing is hitting. All right. So, I mean, that's the drums. It didn't have to go too crazy with it. Didn't have to honestly work too hard because, again, that mega bundle, it's 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 got it. It's all in there. But let's look at that now with the bass. And what are we doing with the bass? The beat is based around the bass instrument. So let's go back to the top of the verse. All right, so let's solo just the bass. I'm soloing to give examples. I don't work a lot in solo. No one's gonna listen to your tracks in solo. No one's gonna buy your record or stream your song and like solo background number three and and you know like it, it, it doesn't work like that. So I like to make my decisions based in the context of the whole mix, um, and then solo if I really need to like zoom in on something and make corrections. But to show y'all what I'm doing, we're gonna use the solo button today. So without any processing, this is the bass loop. All right, so I mean, that's cool. There's a little bit of fuzz with some gremlins up top, but uh, we're leaving the grime in on that. The same way if I sample a, a, a record, if I sample vinyl, I might not take out that record noise. I might leave it in. I might want that. That's kind of the crackle, the glue that makes it hip hop, that, 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 that puts it all together. But what it does have is too much room on it. Uh, when you're dealing with samples, when you're dealing with loops, um, from loop packs or whatever, you don't have control over anything before you got it. So maybe whoever had that idea to put that loop together wanted it to be roomy, like in this case. I don't want that. So the first thing that we do is we're putting on the D verb, which is super duper effective. It does exactly what it says it's gonna do. You turn up the reverb reduction knob and it turns down your reverb and that's dope. When you're dealing with samples, you're gonna need that a lot. So we're just rolling that off. And then another uh, new favorite, I just started messing with this not too long ago, but this big Al is the homie. Al is definitely the homie. Saturation, you know I like to saturate, uh, and this one just sounds really, really nice. Uh, so on this particular bass, what we're doing is we want that bottom, and you see we're boosting that bottom, and that's where all you know that's the foundation. Um, but the definition in this sample, and because it is the main sample in the record until we get to the uh, to to the chorus. It, there's a lot of top end information in in the bass, and we need to keep that. Um, because that's that's the record. So I'm bringing up the high a little bit. Uh, we've got the emphasis. I put that in, and you know we're just we're driving. I want to warm that thing up. Right, so I like that, I'm fooling with it, but let me take this out because we went back to basement again. So this is without the basement. So that's just adding some nice thickness down there. Uh, we got the cutoff at 87, but then we're using the clarity knob to keep us nice and clean and clear up above that, around 400 hertz, where things start to build up. I want this thing to be thick, but not like tough and and and, and chewy, right? Just thick and 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 and, and plumptious. Uh, so the basement's giving me that. And then we're just kind of reining it in a little bit with some comp compression from the focus right channel and just, you know, tiny bit of EQ again. We're notching some stuff and really just trying to keep things clear. So the bass and the drums work together just like that. We got some other instruments, not a whole lot going on instrumentally in the verses. We got that organ stab that you heard.
And that's obviously got a lot of verb. Uh, and I didn't add that. That was that's in the sample. So we went back to the D verb. Uh, I used the pan EQ, which I've just started fooling with a little bit, to widen it. So I'm panning higher frequencies to one side, lower frequencies to another side, just to take what's a little bit of a mono sound and spread it out a little bit, you know? So without. And so you mostly hear that in the reverb in that track, and it just went from like here to woo, and that's a good sound. That's a positive sound, that woo. And then back to Lysia. Those are, these are my friends, apparently. Lysia, just a little bit of compression just to tighten that up and just hold it into place with the M-Presser, and we're good money. Rhodes, Rhodes pads I played, Big Al did the thing. And then we got piano that comes in in the hook. Let's go over to that hook. I'm gonna just take my vocals out for a second so I can show you. So for there, we went to the knee old, but we went to the channel strip. Right, so just a little bit of gain driving it. We're in stereo mode and just squishing a little bit, but I just like the sound of this thing. And it just gave the piano the nice sound I'm going with because I didn't want the piano too bright and too open because the piano is mimicking the hook sample. And that is a different, this is a new element that's not in the verses. And so I had to pay attention to how I'm adding it in with the vocals. So we went to the AMAC and it's the saxophone thing, check it. And then we'll let that ring out through the delays, which we'll look at in a second. But so I just opened it up. I wanted that top end to speak out because it's underneath the vocal, but also I didn't want to crowd the vocal. So around five and change, 560, 580, uh, I'm just ducking some down. It's an important sample, but you got to remember any song that has vocals, that vocal is your most important thing. So even if you got the dope sample, you got to make room within it for the vocal. So I'm just moving some of that 500 hertz back just to make sure the weight of Prem's voice can really sit where it needs to. Let's hear that now with the vocals. Let's take a listen to the hook. Beats that go bump in the night. Sleep with the scissors and I'm running with the knife. Bouquet of stone roses come to life. Is that light at the tunnel? Some of a train fright. Beats that go bump in the night. Sleep. Right? So the sax is hitting, the piano is in there, but Prem's voice is right there. Let's look at what we're doing with the vocals. That's next. We'll come back to that hook in a second. Let's jump back to the verse and just show just the basics. So disclosure on what we did, I recorded this vocal here at the greenhouse. We used one of the new Warm 87s, the, the newer vision, and that went through uh, Focusrite ISA-1 right over here, and a little bit of squish, not a whole lot, uh, from a DBX 560A. I can press on the way in because I like to take chances. So I'm not squashing it a ton in the mix, and I'm hitting it somewhere in the three, five, six dB range. I'm not an over squasher, and then you see on my mix knob, just rolled it back a little bit, just for a little air. Fast release. Uh, at the tempo of this song, this is an up-tempo joint, and I want to make sure that the compressor is letting off in time with Prem's flow. So that's the big thing with compressors and rap vocals. You want to make sure that the release time can keep up because that's where you get your clarity. If the release is too long, you start smearing the following word because the compressor hasn't let off yet. So you want something with a, with a release time that can work with the flow of that song. This is 98, which is not super up tempo, but I make slow songs, and so this is this is up there for me. Um, I don't do a lot of like upbeat, fast dance stuff, at least my own production. So we're rolling off some stuff we don't need underneath his voice, a little sculpting there, and then uh, for deesser, I'm using the SPL, the dual band deesser. And really just using the high the high band here, but I opened it up in case I need that flexibility. 
And just a touch, Prem's got a little bit of a lisp, so you got to be careful not overdoing the DSing. Uh, you you want to be clear and open and just control. It's two knobs, but plenty of control, so that does the job. So that's what we've got on the lead vocal. That's what we've got on the main dub behind him. These two dubs are at the end of the first verse, and they're just for a second, didn't need the DSer. But the rest of the channel settings are the same. And then same for the hook lead and the stack. I doubled the hook, so that's what's on those. Let's take a listen to the hook, and we'll talk about those other vocals. And then we'll talk about some effects and how we're getting this thing nice and splashy. So we've got that hook lead right down the middle, right where it needs to be. That double, this hook lead too, it's a straight up double, and I just nudged it to the side just a little bit, where I don't want it to be completely distinct from the lead because I want it, you know, supporting it. But this isn't just like a texture double. I wanted a little bit of space for that double. So just a little bit to one side or the other can go a long way with your pan pop. And then these stereo backgrounds, I used a cool old vintage U-Hair stereo mic from like the 50s or 60s. And it was an experiment, but it sounded cool. And I just wanted Prem to yell some of the emphasis lines from the hook and using the Bruce Swedean school of thought, mic it in the stereo. All the percussion stuff you heard on the Michael Jackson records, Bruce, rest in peace, uh, use stereo mics, so it already had space to it. So instead, you know, I'm using some reverb, but instead of having to do a whole lot, I just said, Prem, move to the left a little bit, move to the right a little bit. We got the stereo mic, and that's what these sound like. Beats like a bump in the night, 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 running with the knife, 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 knife. Right, so... There's a vibe to them. That's not what I would use for a lead vocal, but for something like this, just layering up, it's dope. Um, and then Elysia Impressor, and I just use the Stereo Maker for the second one. Prime didn't stand enough off to the right. Well, no, I'm the producer. I didn't have him stand enough off to the right, and so we just tilted that stereo image, and Bob's your uncle. Effects-wise, we got a little bit of room going, the BX rooms, and... Nothing too crazy. There's not a ton going to it. The big kick is actually going there because I wanted that cavernous kind of space and a little bit from the instruments. And then just these backgrounds. Usually I'll use some pre-delay on, on a reverb, but this is just for some ambience as opposed to let me give you a whole space. So it's not a lot of pre-delay. Uh, we got some roll-offs and pretty standard EQ stuff, or pretty standard reverb stuff. And then I've got a few delays. And any mix... Um, for rap records, I'm using probably a slap delay as opposed to a reverb on the vocal. I want to put, I want to imply space uh, within that vocal, but I don't, for raps, a long reverb is probably not it. So he's got a little bit of a slap back here with this BX2500, rolling off the super top and rolling off the super bottom in about 80 milliseconds. Just, it hits for a second. It's like, oh, there's something there, but you're not, we're not washing everything out. And then standard eighth note, quarter note delay and that you know standard delay stuff nothing too crazy there i put the eighth note on the dubs in the verse rather than on the lead so it's not filling up all the space again remember i want to leave space for things but the emphasis words the words that he dubs those get a little bit of ring out uh for a little added emphasis to it and then finally uh after the second verse we go into a double chorus and I wanted to make a moment there. You know, I like to put a moment in a record where, you know, you listen to it and you're like, oh, there's the dope thing I didn't expect. That's dope. Let me rewind it and hear the song again. That's how you turn one stream into two. Uh, I always want to have some kind of magic moment. So to earn the time of this double chorus at the end, at the beginning of the fourth chorus, the last one of the song, I put a drop there. Let's play it and I'll show you how I did that. King of Stone Roses come to life in the night at the tunnel, summer of train crash. Beats that go bump in the night, running with the knife. Who King of Stone Roses come to life? Is it light at the tunnel, the summer of train crash? Beats that go bump in the night. Right, so some of that obviously is chopping and muting the shaker, muting the hi-hats, moving some snares around, but we went a little lo-fi there for a second. We got a little funky for a second. And that is with uh, 
the Elysia Music Q, Music Q, Music, the EQ that is cool because there's some resonant features to it. And that let me, so I'm rolling off the top, right? But with the resonant peak there, let's solo this spot. And I think that if I mute the vocal, it'll be more obvious. Right, so it's just for two bars. This comes in right after that single symbol. The reverse comes back, sucks everything together, and then we cut off the top. We've got a little bit of resonance peak in the middle, just to kind of accentuate that that radio tone. Because uh, the radio tone isn't just no bottom and no top. There's a poke through in the middle that we want to get, and then a little bit at the bottom. And then that's it. So. Basically, that's my rundown of a uh, new Prem Rock and Willie Green joint, Bump in the Night, mixed with Mega. Like I said, the Mega Bundle has basically got everything that you need. If you got that Mega Bundle, you're going to be able to mix a record and you're going to have the tools and you're going to be able to do something dope because there's nothing that you're going to be looking for that isn't covered with this bundle. So again, my name is Willie Green. This is The Greenhouse. Shout out to Plugin Alliance for having me in here and showing y'all a little bit of how I get down. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace. Thank you.